Hey. Hey there. Sorry about that. How are you? No worries. Um, shutting it off on you. All right. Shut yep. it off. You uh, put it like back there on top of like the couch, like against it. Okay, cool. Let me um, grab it back quickly. Okay. So, do we continue going over it today? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, Jeff Western. Okay. Okay. See the screen? Mm hmm. So we did this one, right? This was the centripetal force problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know the equation for um, amps. So the unit, you just, this is just for the uh, unit. So an amp is equal to coulombs per second. Okay, yeah, we did that yesterday. So 0.6, but it's in milliseconds. Mm -hmm. So is it? 30,000 seconds? Well, it's a millisecond, so it's smaller than a second. Oh, oh, I'll oh, just fraction. You would write, I would just write it as 30 E neg 3 okay. seconds. All right. Or 6, 30 E neg, neg 2. You said um six over thirty e neck two. Where did you get the point six? Yeah, the I converted both of them. Okay. But I guess it's fine either way, whatever. So it's one over five e to the negative second. Um so wait, you did point six on top or what did you do? Maybe six e negative one coulombs. Okay. So one over five e to the negative second. Let's see, negative one minus Plus three. Is it three minus one? Wait. Could it be positive? Yeah. Okay. And then what's one over five um uh, as a decimal? Two five. Or no, it's like point two. Mm -hmm. E two means we move it to the decimal right. place twice to the right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. That's You do it the same way. The battery, but the battery is in volts, not cooler. Okay, so now was this like a guess? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's talk about this for a sec. So um Do you add like two plus four and then take it away from the so so if you have a wire let's say this is the wire and you know inside of it it's composed of let's say copper atoms and electricity is like the movement of electrons mm -hmm. 
So you have these electrons traveling through the wire. Yeah. Now, I'm going to draw like a side view of this with the copper atoms like this. And the electrons, as they travel through, they brush up against the copper atoms. And that causes, you know, friction, which means that energy gets lost as heat. Mm -hmm. So if you make this wire longer, what happens to, like, would there be more, like, brushing up against the copper atoms or less? Less. Um, well, if it's go if you're going forward, right? Like but if they're oh, so there's no more copper atoms, like if they're all here and you're going this way, then they're oh, so there, there's copper atoms all throughout the wire. If, right. Uh I can't draw all of them. I get it. But if you're if you're going, you know, if the electrons are moving forward, they're brushing up against more and more electron, I mean, more and more copper atoms, the longer yes. that gets. Okay. So now it's more uh, large. Um, it just means that it's, it's brushing up against more of the atoms causing friction, meaning uh, in other words, like resistance. Mm -hmm. Now, alternatively, what if we made the cross-sectional area of the wire uh, larger? That means that the electrons now have... Less friction? More... What's up? Would it be less friction? Uh, so the electrons have more, like, avenues to go through... Which would mean, yes, there should be less of the brushing up and more friction, uh, less friction. The less resistance. Yes. So now the resistance formula is this. It, uh, so this rho term is something called resistivity. And that's just an intrinsic property of whatever material we're using so that's something like a value that they'll give you um but you can see that resistance is proportional to length right and inversely proportional to area so if length goes up resistance goes up if area goes up resistance goes down right uh -huh. okay now why am i saying telling you all this so if you had resist like let's say this is a resistor like these two resistors are in series right let's say this is resistor 1 resistor 2 if you add these resistors in series you're creating the equivalent of a stronger resistance uh of a longer resistor oh uh, yeah and since resistance is proportional to length, the overall resistance goes up. Right. So that's why equivalent resistance would be R1 plus R2. Okay. Now. So length over resistance is the. What's up? Like, if we're solving this, we want our answer in terms of amps. Oh, so before we get to that, so now we have, let's say, two resistors in parallel. Now, you're giving a chance for the electrons to go, you know, through multiple paths here, right? Mm -hmm. So you're doing the equivalent of increasing the area 
by adding these resistors, right? Yes. And resistance, is it proportional to area or inversely proportional to area? Inversely. So resistance so yep. would be subtracted. So resistance would go down. And that's why you see the reciprocal sum like this. Uh -huh. So like this, this sum is going to be smaller than the, the resistance. Which okay, one? yeah. Oh, which one did you say? Well, then this one. Oh, yeah. So that's why if you're so that's why in series you are in line with each other. Yeah. So that's why in series you add the resistors to get a larger resistance. But in parallel, you get you reduce the resistance because you have a larger area. Uh -huh. OK, so that's why those equations work that way. Now, for this, you want to be thinking of Ohm's law, V equals IR. Okay. All right. So, what does the I stand for? Oh, so that's current. Okay. Mm -hmm. So resistance. is six mm -hmm. and the voltage is 12. Yep. So you, do you do uh six divide uh sorry 12 divided by six and you get two. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. It's actually a really easy really easy problem now that I like understand it. I think this was just a math problem. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. So, so this I'm fine with. Something you you understand? Yeah, I didn't like do any of what they're saying. Okay. I just said that if the same length but double the diameter, then yeah. Then what? But why? Why though? Would it be one one half a uh, quarter? How did I think of this? Hold on. Wouldn't the resistance, well, now that I know it, wouldn't the resistance of Y or Y be greater? Sorry. Yeah, be greater because X is um wider. It's double the width. Um, so, uh, and we did um so you wanna you wanna set up a proportion here, like a proportionality relationship. Uh -huh. So so x is the same as two y. So let's so the um diameter of x is is equal to two times the diameter, diameter of diameter of y. Okay. Yes. Now what? To set up a relationship with the resistances. Like, okay. we have to incorporate it. Right. I just... Is it this formula? Uh huh. Okay, so. But it, yeah, it's more so just the proportional, like the length, the proportionality of resistance. Oh, area. Yeah. But this primarily is asking you, like, if you're given like diameter, um. And we're 
trying to figure out resistance and we know the relationship between resistance and area how would that be like uh how would that be shown for area like let's say that area is equal uh, to length over resistance area is equal to length over no so i mean like so so uh, resistance is inversely proportional to area mm -hmm. but now resistance and length are proportional yeah but now think about what diameter means and how to make that related to area So let's say we have a circle with a radius r. Yeah. And we double the radius. What so happens? Two r. If you double the radius mm -hmm. or the diameter? Uh, they're, you know, it could be either. You double two r, you have four r. Well, yeah. But uh, what happens to the area? The area. Isn't the area like pi r squared for okay. circles? Okay, go from there. So if the um radius is increasing, then the square of the radius will increase as well. But I don't think it doubles necessarily. So if you double the radius, what happens to the area? It also increases. Well, yeah, but I mean, but by how much? I mean, everyone knows, you know, if you double, if you raise the diameter, of course, you're going to have a higher resist uh, area, but. Okay. All right. So let's say R is one. You double it. Now R is two. So area goes from. It doubles. Or no, it. So think about the. It quadruples. Yeah. Okay. Why is it quadruple? Because it goes from like uh one times pi, like pi to four pi. I know, but like yeah, why why does it do that? Shit, I feel like the question is like not clicking in my head right now. What, what do you mean why does it do that? So I'm asking the equation. What equation though? Like, so I'm just asking if you take the if you double a radius, yes, what happens to the area? It quadruples. All right, tell me why. Because you're taking the square of the yeah. diameter. All right, good. So that's so if you're talking about area, right? It doesn't matter if it's a circle or square or anything like that. It's going to be in two dimensions, right? Yes. So so they're going to like to ask questions like if you double the diameter, what will happen to the area, right? So if we know that the if we double, now we know that there's that square relationship, so area is proportional to r squared, right? Yeah. That would mean then resistance is inversely proportional to r squared. Yes. If you double that, resi uh, sorry, that radius, uh, sorry, yeah, the radius, which is pretty much the same thing as a diameter. Uh, yep, you'll quadruple, or yeah, you would make the resistance go down by a factor of four okay so so mainly i just wanted you to to know that if i know just work my way through the problem mm -hmm. so yeah okay oops <laughs> sorry okay so this is 
this equation, right? V equals I R. Oh, uh, no. let's see. Capacitance. Oh, yeah. So to add to what I already wrote uh, and drew here, capacitance is going to be, he's blue, is going to have, be um, proportional to area over distance, with area being the area of the like plate, the capacitor plate, and D being the distance between the two. Right? Yeah. So now if we add, so if we had capacitors in series, Remember, if we're doing it in series, we're increased, we're essentially creating something with a larger length. And since capacitance is inversely proportional to length, which is just written as D here, if you add, so let, let's say capacitor one, capacitor two, you would have to use the reciprocal sum. One over C1 plus one over C2. Okay. Can you explain again, like, the relationship between, like, so resistors, like, stop the flow of, like... So, yeah, so think about, so, like, uh, the example I gave was, like, with a wire. Yeah. But in these circuit diagrams, we, we basically ignore the resistance of the wire itself. But now the resistor, you, you could think of it as how I described the wire. Like, you have electrons trying to get through mm -hmm. right and there's all these atoms of whatever that resistor is made out of that the electrons like brush up against and it's like walking through like a crowd or something like that and you know imagine imagine you had is this like a breaker in um like an electrical circuit or that's different um a breaker like, you know how, like, lights and stuff, like, when some, oh. like, the power goes out, like, you have to go to the breaker thingy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just to, pre uh, to re prevent something from short-circuiting. But, okay. um. So that's different. But it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty similar, I guess. But, like, I think what the circuit breaker does is that it's the switch, it makes the switch go. In the other yeah. direction but but yeah just think of it as like you know like or this thing that i drew here think of like the copper atoms as like a uh bunch of people and um you know like the 14th there's like the 14th street subway that i think is like on i forgot where but it's like there's a part where there's a really narrow underground you know passage or whatever and if there's a bunch of people like it's crowded right and it's thin it's a narrow passage you're going to like brush up again i mean like it's not it's not like it's that crowded or usually but imagine it's so crowded that you brush up against people right and every time you do that you lose energy in the form of like heat through friction um as opposed to if you had a more wider area um you lose uh, heat when you brush up against people yep what about the like whole penguin thing how they like all huddle together to stay warm uh well i mean that's another way to to do it but uh brushing up against uh something think about like a rug burn oh right so um the yeah, so so the resistor is just something that's composed of atoms of something, and the electrons have to go th through them, and as they go through them, they, you know, brush up against them, uh, and then that produces, then that causes, uh, and that's resistance, and resistors would emit heat as, you know, it moves forward. Mm -hmm. So... Did that answer your question about the resistors? Yeah, I it answered about resistors, but now with the like cap, cap 
past attempts like how was that like yeah so um so yeah for capacitors essentially what happens is is so let's say we have our electrons going here and they hit this part of uh, this first plate mm -hmm. they can't travel along really? to the other side yet so they're just gonna the accumulate the charges will just accumulate on the surface of the plate until no more you know until there's no more room left for for any other electron and that's when it's charged and it will can then do a discharge like shooting all these electrons to the opposite end of the capacitor to the other plate mm -hmm. then the electrons can travel through the wire back to the battery what would be the point of that you could store charge that's like, like a phone a different, battery or you know like a defibrillator like yeah oh okay so you can store yeah it's a way to store uh, char uh charge um and to discharge something so you know when you have like you know your heart yeah um like let's just say this is like whatever this top part your your body and then this is one plate this is the other plate of the defibrillator it will discharge go go you know through your heart you know and and get the um I forgot what it was called but uh the vagal vagus uh, isn't vasovagal like the thing where you like get nauseous or like start to faint when you see blood or oh yeah um yeah. so it's it's okay Isn't it like the fibrillation, like AFib to be that? Uh, say that. Like the fibrillation thing, I was just learning about in bio, like AFib to VFib, or. Oh, I don't know so much about that, but yeah, essentially, um, the. I forgot what I forgot what it was called. It was like there's some there's something in the heart that causes it to to beat. But basically, you discharge from one capacitor, and it goes through the heart, set, like resetting it, um, and then you know the charges go end up on the other end of the plate. So mm -hmm. that's what you essentially are doing with a defibrillator so okay all right so one over okay okay vagus nerve okay that's that's the cool the one um potential difference yeah we have a nice you know, clinical, medical, relevant thing here. Yeah. So, thought some okay. something random. So, all right, cool. Now, um, okay. Capacitor. How does the area and distance help us uh -huh. solve this? Because don't we need an equation that... <laughs> Like, I don't see how this one would help us solve it because we don't have the distance or area. Oh, yeah. So, okay, let me let me take a look here. So, the capacitor has a capacitance. C equals that many micro uh, farads. The, the potential difference across the capacitor is changed from one volt to five. Um, what is the change in... Okay, well, so now they're saying potential energy stored by the capacitor. So, that's what we can 
or well that's what we're trying to, to find out mm -hmm. now the formula for uh for the potential energy of a capacitor um is similar in appearance to the formula MGH? what up is it the mgh formula like modified uh no it, it surprisingly looks more like even though it's potential energy, it's it looks more like the kinetic energy formula. And you'll see that happen for, you know, also for elastic potential energy. So it's, a, it's basically one half capacitance times voltage squared. Okay. Mm -hmm. um. But it's the change in, right? Like, is it four v squared? Oh, um, yeah, uh, we could, I guess, do inside of it the v two minus v one part. Mm -hmm. So, like one half. Uh, uh, 1500 uh, microfarads times well if it's 5 minus 1 V then we just get 4 V squared anyways uh, yeah so let's see we have 1 half and 1500 E neg 6 farads and then five minus four. One. I'm thinking of like um okay. And then so this should be wait, how did you get one? Oh, my bad. Four squared. So 16 V squared Q goes into it eight times, or rather maybe I should do goes into it eight times and then eight times the 1500. Um, how would you do this? Um, twelve thousand e to the negative six, or twelve e to the negative three. Okay. Let's see here. It's gonna give us the right answer. Okay, I think I think that we can do this. So the V part, I think we would have to uh square those terms. Each? Yeah, because here, because the thing is that this V is not delta V. Mm -hmm. So. So do you solve for each individually? Like, do you solve for um yeah V squared and then five uh twenty five V squared? Yeah, yeah, and we can we can at least and we can at least like factor out the one half C part to get one half C, and then in parentheses we can have like v2 squared minus v1 squared okay so 25 minus 1 is just 24 v squared so we have that. one half of 1500 e to the negative 6 times 24 v squared okay you factor and so um, 
then yep. you could do 1500 times 12. Yep. Which if 15 times eight was 120. So maybe I would do like 1500 times 10 to get like 15,000 E negative six. And then if you round it, and then if I get move, point zero one five. Uh so yeah, if I if I move the decimal point to the left six times, one, two, three, four, five, six, I get point oh one five. And since it's a little bit bigger, so it's eighteen. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Can I, like, when I was looking at this, I couldn't remember, I know you showed me a chart when we first started learning together that was, like, where the, like, different frequencies fall, and I just, like, looking at them, ultrasound is the only one that's different from, like, the waves, like, like, radiation and stuff. Uh, yeah, maybe you're referring to, like, the electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah. So that's, like, all light waves. Uh-huh. Uh, and since this is sound, I, yep. I don't know. I'm not sure what a transverse wave is, so. Yeah. So there's two types of waves. There's transverse and longitudinal. So a transverse wave. Give me one second. My grandpa just came. I just I want to yeah. make sure. He's... Totally. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like transverse wave, I'm not sure what it is. So I just like found that ultrasound was different. So I liked it. Yeah. So, you know. Okay, so let's say this is the direction of the wave. And okay, let's say like imagine like water, like drop a pebble in water. Um, like let's say this arrow is the direction that the wave travels, but it will move the medium that it's in either upwards or downwards so could be up could be down and if they are perpendicular you know you'll get something like that right yeah to so and it and it's for, this is for ultrasound though right 
so this is for so this is just what a trans wave in general uh this is just a transverse wave okay which means the direction that the wave is traveling i'm sorry keep like my pens aren't working mm -hmm. the direction that the wave is traveling is like directly above or below the other so the so the direction that the wave is traveling is perpendicular to um the movement of the medium that it travels in mm -hmm. so so that's transverse wave now the other type of wave is a longitudinal wave and that's when you have when the movement of the medium is in the same plane as the movement of the wave. So for instance, if the wave goes this way, for like sound waves, you'll have like some air, like molecules of air like close together, and then they can be far apart like this, and then close together again, and then far apart like this. So it's almost like, kind of like, so like if I'm speaking and, you know, my voice goes into, uh, in this direction, imagine like the wave going like back and forth like this. Like it hits, bounces off something, hits it and then keeps going. Oh no, it just will. So instead of like a transverse where it'll go up and down. This would go like expansion and contraction and expansion and contraction in the same direction of that the wave travels in. Okay. So yeah. So longitudinal. So like in this drawing here, it's uh you think of like this part as the compression part, and then this as the expansion part. And then this is the compression part again. You know the instrument? It's like a yeah, Russian. I was, say, I was gonna say like an accordion. Yeah, I don't I don't know how to say it in English. But... Yeah. So that's yeah, that's exactly how I, I usually describe it. Yeah, like an accordion. So uh so now uh sound waves are longitudinal waves. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is. And uh light waves are um transverse light waves okay yeah sound longitude and it kind of makes sense yeah okay because i also like when you're recording a sound like a voice memo or something how like the waves only go in upwards in one direction like they'll never go <laughs> downwards Oh yeah, I'm. Oh, you said like when you're recording something, or you know when you like record a voice memo on the phone, and then you see like the little like sound bites that like only go upwards; they don't go down in the opposite direction. Uh, I've never tried anything like that, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much that. I don't see <laughs> the impossible choice. Oh, what the. Can you take off your little block thing? Yeah, that's okay. Is it is it just me or oh that's weird. Yeah. I'm i I'm opening up I using like a Wacom tablet now and for some reason when I put it on that the wave like disappears but whatever so Wait, what like so, you don't see the image yeah. yeah yeah but i when i move it up to my monitor like it, i could see it but oh, okay I don't know why. but um okay so yeah displacement time graph of an electromagnetic wave is given below what is the wavelength of the wave uh okay so yeah so don't you do like the height Um, it's like, uh -huh. 
Like they're inversely proportional, right? Like, isn't it like displacement over time? Uh, tr uh, if you want it, so displacement over time would be velocity, right? Yeah. So here we have, so we have the x-axis. The is wavelength is what we're looking for. What's up? We're looking for the, no, never mind, just you explain it. So, okay, so we have, um, you know, x-axis is time, and, mm -hmm. you know, at what time here <laughs> is, uh, does one wave uh, occur? Five, uh, point five seconds. Yep, milliseconds, yep. Yes. So, now, that's also <laughs> to something I like a uh, period. Yeah. Which is the inverse of frequency. So if we do one over the 0.5 times 10 to the negative three, we would get frequency. And then we can figure out wavelength. Mm -hmm. Um. So, so do you do one over 0. 0.5 e to negative three times? Would it be 20 centimeters or 40? Because it does it twice. Um, so, so if we're trying to find the wavelength, right? Um, uh, in terms like, okay, so like what formulas come to mind when you think of? frequency and wavelength. The one like F mm -hmm. over D or no, that's this thing. So, so let's think of, so uh, the unit for wavelength would be like some unit of length, right? Yeah. And it convert to meters per second usually. Okay, well, okay. So tell me, like, tell me about that. So, so if, like, yeah. Oh. I can remember the equation. I just remember that. Mm -hmm. Like lambda is in hertz. Oh, uh, so lambda's no frequency is in hertz, not wavelength. Yeah. Now, if uh, if you can deconstruct hertz, what would you get? It'll be one. I remember when you explained it? I just. Huh. One over seconds. Okay. Right. Yes. So if you multiply that by wavelength, right, which is in meters, what do you end up with? Meters per second. Yep. So now this is an example of if we don't remember the formula, the units will help us out. So now we know that frequency times wavelength is equal to velocity of the wave, right? Mm -hmm. So now there, so we see here that the frequency, right, is going to be one over 0.5 e neg three right yes and well we're trying to find wavelength right so we want to do we want to isolate wavelength so we want to divide both sides by uh f frequency v over f so yep so v over f is equal to lambda now meters what's per second over second over uh one over seconds but the what what wouldn't that just be meters times 
second over second. Then they cancel out and you end up in meters, which oh, that's stupid because that just gives us land. <laughs> but but that's what we want, right? But now the question is, what do we what, what do we put in for velocity? Uh, I'm not sure. So what's meant when they say an electromagnetic wave? Isn't this what you were talking about, how there's like different types, like there's transverse wave, and that's so different from electromagnetic? Oh, no, no. So the two types of waves would be transverse and longitudinal. Right. Right. Um, but an electromagnetic wave, and make sure you remember this, is a light wave. Okay. Like, and that's because light produces, like, an electric field as well as a magnetic field. That makes electromagnetic uh, transverse, which is what this is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but now that we know it's a light wave, how can that help us now? Is this like the Planck's constant thing? Well, that's for us to... figure out like the energy but if we're talking about light of the photon right that's what i'm thinking of that's not right so yeah so if we're thinking of light and we're thinking of velocity mm -hmm. what could that be the speed that the light travels at so the... well what speed would that be point So Three second. Oh, no, that's a five. No, no, no. So um that's speed, not velocity. What's the speed of light? I don't remember the value. Oh. Okay. Uh by the way, did you take physics in college or yeah, I took a freshman year first like in second semester. Got it. So so yeah, you definitely want to. have this memorized as well. It's three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And that's the speed of light in a vacuum. So yeah, it's that's very important. Like, and all the stuff we're gonna see about light is a very big thing on the MCAT. So we definitely wanna make sure that we thoroughly understand this stuff uh -huh. so okay so 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 that so this is represented as c usually right so so now to find wavelength right it's just c over frequency right yes And so that'll be three e eight to the eighth eight over second. yep two. Uh, what do you mean by two? You do. Oh, you mean uh? So yeah, for the frequency, you did one over zero point five, five e to the negative third three. But it's, oh, so just that, okay. So this would be like two, because I could do one E zero and one divided by 0. 0.5 will be two. And then zero minus negative three would give me E three. Mm -hmm. So two E three, like, Yeah, so then you could do 1.5 e to the um, fifth. Yep. Mm 
And then what? And this is in um, meters. Yep. So now we want to, you know, we have, I mean, we could at least eliminate A. Yeah. And it's funny, I guess 42% chose A. Um, but, uh, but okay, now these all have 1.5, you know, or 1.5. I think they just took, chose it because 20 is two. Yeah, yeah, that's, okay. that's how it'll go, right? That's why we're training you to be aware of such traps. But if it's 1.5 meters and the only option that well, it could be e5 meters right so now let's move the decimal point point over five times so one two three four five so that's one two three four so this is one hundred and fifty thousand meters or 150 kilometers uh -huh. hence so so you can see well, once i'm at 1.5 e to the fifth meters like i know that it's not going to be 15 or 150 meters uh okay just from looking at it no because i guess if there were other options that were like 150 or a thousand like 500 kilometers yeah are you saying because well like i knew it couldn't be in terms of meters and be a number this small like it would have to be uh, 150,000 meters so it can't be 15 or 150 meters do you know what I'm saying like these two are just way too small sure 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 um but you know uh ultimately yes. you know this is how we got that number uh -huh. so just be like definitely have to know this yes you have to know all that stuff in the essential equations deck but you definitely have to know this. You definitely have to know this, right? And um, and then yeah, and and, and yeah, and you you can see now that uh, all, some a lot of the information that they're giving us here, especially like the twenty here, is you know to distract you, and you know people who don't really think too much about it, like just you know, would choose that. So you don't want to be part of that. Okay. Group. Definitely not. Yep. And also uh the this number here happens to be because our mind works through like associations, right? So like that can help you. So like for instance, this is a million times faster than the speed of sound. Yes. So the speed of sound is going to be a millionth of this, which is a roughly 300 uh, meters per second. Okay. That's why like planes can break the sound barrier, but not even yep. close to it. Yeah, yeah. That like really in crazy, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen videos of that, but some really crazy stuff. What uh you know the first uh invention of man that broke the sand barrier sound barrier it is uh the concord uh so the before all that it was the whip the whip whip that's why the whip has that crap oh exactly um and this also happens to be like roughly the population of the United States <laughs> so. Okay. All right. So. I can't remember. I didn't flag it. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Direction of motion shown view represents the point at which the wave intersects. Well, you just follow the direction of the wave, so it goes downwards. Um. Yeah. So, like, if the wave is going to the left, then you know, 
this thing can only go like up and down, right? So at least that means we can get rid of C and D. And then, yeah, it'll be downwards. Because I'm imagining this is like a boat and like these are the waves of the water and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yep, you got it. So. Yeah, this is a guess. Two. Well, you're a really good guesser, it seems. Um, 14 seconds. Yeah, I looked at it and I was like, absolutely not. So now you know exactly how to solve for this. So as a period. Okay. Period is like the wavelength, right? Oh, no. If you look at the unit for period, that can help. Seconds. Okay. Now That's one over frequent uh frequency yep. is one over seconds. Yep. So period, if that's in seconds, one over period would give us frequency, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. And then what else? What do we do then? Electromagnetic is light and it's traveling in a vacuum, so we can use speed of light, yep. which is in meters per second, and that's velocity. So we have velocity and frequency, so we can solve for lambda. All right. Okay, so mm -hmm. um eight, sorry, three e to the eighth over two e to the negative fifteenth. Uh oh wait so the frequency would be one over the two e negative one uh fifteen right yeah uh so when you divide oh so you multiply them yep you could yeah you just multiply them two e to the negative fifteenth um okay so it's six e to the Negative seventh. Excellent. Awesome. That's easy. Mm -hmm. Knowing equations makes us a lot. Okay. I, I'm actually curious if I got this one right. Do you mind? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I was just, I thought that the light entered here. So I thought it would be either alpha or beta and that it would refract and be like this one. I don't know. Is that, that's not gamma. This is gamma. Whatever this thing is. Like, I knew that the answer, the denominator would be this one. I just couldn't tell if it was. I guess it makes sense that it's beta because. No, it doesn't. I still. Uh, okay, let's see. So. What is the refractive index of the glass? Uh, all right. So. Schnell's law. Over here, right? N1 sine theta. Well, so, uh, okay, so the angle that we use is going to, so see the dotted line? Mm -hmm. So that's called the normal, and it's just uh, perpendicular to the interface between the air and the glass. Yeah. So when we talk about when we're using Schnell's law, we are using the angle relative to the normal. Okay. Which means these two. Mm -hmm. so then this would be N1 sine of beta is equal to N2 sine of lowercase delta. Delta. Yep. And then we can divide. Uh, N2 on both sides and sine beta on both sides to get N1 over N2 is equal to sine of theta over sine of beta. So, oh wait, oh, so they're asking Delta. about the, 
the refractive index of the glass. They're asking about so that, but flipped. The it's N2 beta. over N1. Yeah. So, yep. So it'll be the sine of beta over sine of delta. I was just confused why, mm -hmm. like, when you're looking at this, like, it cuts it directly in half. Like, this is what I was confused about. But I guess if it was alpha, then it would have to be this one. And if uh, I... No. Right? So it has to be, like, the one that's closest to the normal, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the angle that we use, we're going to use... Um, is it called the angle of incidence? Is yeah. that okay? That's the angle at which it hits this. Yeah. This here is the angle of the refraction. Action. Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. Yeah. It when it's like light glare. I know like the glasses that have like the polar yep. lenses so you can see through it. Mm-hmm. The polarized, yeah, plain polarized sunglasses. So like the like a light source is going to em and like emit light in every single direction. Mm -hmm. And if we had a polarizer, like let's say like vertical kind of slits, like when this, you know. Does it block the light? Yep. So only the these vertical slits come in. Yeah. And so that helps with things like glare yeah. because, you know, you're going to have, you're not going to have, uh, you know, all of these different types of extra light. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Cool. I really, yeah, this, uh huh. This was a guess. Got it. So, yeah. So, okay. Let's talk about Young's, you know, slit experiments. So, he was basically the one that kind of demonstrated that light can behave as a wave as well. And yeah. what he What he did was, so, like, let's say we have a slit, and let's just say that we have, like, photons of light that are much smaller than the slit. If that was the case, they could just go straight through. There's oh, I remember this experiment. Yep. I learned about this in like high school physics. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um yeah. So basically, like, okay, so like, yeah, if if the slit is large, like too large or whatever, the light will just go through it like a particle does. But once you start to make the slit smaller, I usually use a metric card to describe this. You're you're having so like let's say this is the slit here. So okay, let's start with let's say this is the slit here, and <laughs> and like if it's too big, it could just go through, and it's like whatever yeah. it's a particle. But if it's smaller. When it, as it goes through, it'll kind of bend. Yeah. And when it comes out on the other side, it can, oh, yes, let me do it for something like this, like a larger thing. It'll come out like this and form regions of like interference like constructive interference and destructive interference and then you know on the other end of the screen here you'll get you know some light parts that show constructive interference some dark parts that show destructive interference so that uh interference demonstrates that it's light behaving as a wave. Um, now, this can also be viewed as like, because like the center here is going to have a lot more of the light reaching it. So it'll kind of look like this kind of shape as far as the um 
intensity of light goes. But uh, also for this experiment, what you need is what's called a coherent light, a light source, which means it's light that... All throughout. What's up? Coherent. Yeah, that just means so that just means light that must be in phase. So um so that's yeah, one thing. And then also monochromatic light. Uh no colors. Yep. Or really just one color. So but I mean, you know, uh that it, we could also do this with non visible light. So think about it as light of a certain wavelength okay like one wavelength okay that makes sense mm -hmm. so so yeah so the concept that explains it is interference mm -hmm. and then comparatively like reflection i know absorption i know chromatic aberration just means weird colors uh-huh okay which this is one yep wavelength so uh, that would make sense okay Okay. Yep. So how can I think about this? So I you're looking through it, you see that like the okay, so the slit just causes an interference for the proton. Uh oh. yeah, so the interference uh yeah, so the slit forces the photon to to act as a wave to to like get through and then the waves will have, you know, the interference, which will give them the, the bands. Mm -hmm. so, yep. Cool. Oh yeah. So that picture that they have here is something that yeah, I was thinking. I uh, I have a different version of it, but I was thinking of showing you because. Oops. Let me take a screenshot of it. So here we're talking about, so this is what I mean, like, okay, so radio waves are so, because right now we have radio waves going through us, right? Mm -hmm. Since the wavelength is so, oh, it's funny, they spelled wavelength wrong, but, oh no, they spent, spelled it. No, they spelled it wrong. It's HT instead of TH. Yep, yep. And then this one is waste. Waste. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so, okay. The um waste length. And then length again is spelled wrong in waste. <laughs> so okay, so okay. What uh radio waves size of buildings essentially. Um and uh don't affect us, and then microwaves, blah 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 blah. Don't they affect us? Like that's what uh I mean. If the you, crazy oh, like oh, tin hat people that say that like if you work you can yeah. stand in front of the microwave when you cook food i remember hearing that when i was little yeah yeah you so, should never stand in front of it and also that phones give off mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so uh okay so so once we get to the level of like molecular which is essentially like ultraviolet that's yeah. when it's on the same scale as our DNA molecules, which is why, like, ultraviolet light causes, like, messes up our DNA, causes those thymine dimers. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. In your germ thing, you know, you're you're probably dealing with that all the time, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, that's so as the as as the wavelengths get smaller, they get more dangerous. And then yes. X rays, you know, can go through everything except like bone, so we can use it for that. But but also, you know, they have you wear the lead vest. And, because... Yeah, metal or something inside of it, right? Lead. Yeah, yeah, particularly lead because it's so dense. And if it's dense, it means that the spacing between the atoms are really close together, and they're so close together that the small x-ray wavelength can't get through. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, gamma ray. That's on the level of atomic nuclei. And that's the most powerful and it's the most uh, damaging. So Gamma rays? 
what are like what's an example of a gamma ray uh hard to okay i mean like x-ray uv ray like i have examples of things that like fall under those categories but gamma okay so let's say that someone has like a brain tumor and that Uh -huh. The radiation is gamma. oh well, well let, let's just say that we're doing we're doing uh someone has a, a brain tumor and um you know it's pretty deep in there and it's not possible to do surgery in a regular way because we can't you know op you know we would otherwise have to open up a large portion of the of the brain to get there so what can happen is you can have like little kind of like drill like some tunnels that go into the Yeah, tumor for us. and then they go in there and then they turn on gamma rays so this is called a gamma knife Yes. and the gamma rays will like split and completely destroy the uh cancerous tissue on the not just cellular level not just molecular level not just atomic level but on the level of the atomic nuclei aka like proton neutron level Very cool. Wow. so yeah 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 Okay, there's also I found like this on the web for very cool. Wow. Check it out. Every time. I don't know yeah how to turn it on. yeah yeah there's um Go away. there's a there's a scene in this movie about the manhattan project where he's testing like the radiation from like a plutonium core and like and it's covered in like a shroud that prevents the radiation from coming out but he like makes a mistake and then it it opens up and he push it he puts it back on like in like three four seconds but right away he's like everyone in the in the in the same room he was like do them chalking he's like circle where you are right now and then he did the math and then he's like okay you're okay you're okay you're okay but the guy who did that um being exposed to gamma radiation for like five seconds like he died like a week later Wow. yep Scary. Yeah, there's a building in um my on my campus. It's called uh the plants I no, it's next to plant sciences, whatever. It's literally the most depressing building you can imagine. And there's like no windows, no doors, like That's weird. they it's the building that they worked on the Manhattan Project in. Oh, <laughs> interesting. That makes yeah. sense. And they make you take all of the science finals in there in the basement. Uh, So that's, it's like the most depressing, like horrible yeah. place to take a final. That's interesting. Yep. Yeah. That's some cool stuff. yeah. Okay. So yeah, I like looking at the answer choices. I thought it would have to be something between like six and eight. Sorry, six and seven. Because like ultraviolet's already eight. Oh yeah, yeah. So you can you can remember that it's the range for by uh for Yeah, it's I thought it was like four hundred because color starts at like four fifty. uh yeah yeah. So like you know, roughly that. Okay. Yeah. Which one is higher energy? This or this? Seven hundred. Mm hmm. right because the wavelength is smaller, so doesn't that make it more dangerous? Wait, seven fifty is. smaller than 390 Isn't seven fifty like violet? well so so don't worry about anything like that this compared to this which has larger uh Wavelength. yeah Seven hundred. now and then what's the relationship between energy and wavelength Oh, okay. So the larger the wavelength, the lower the energy. Yep, and that's why here Okay. you see. Remember, like the large Yeah, they're not wavelength. dangerous to us. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah.
So, and expect to see things like that. Cause like I, I went over like an MCAT question like yesterday that was from one of the tests. My first MCAT, I, that like practice test that I took, I got stuck on a question that was like, uh, what is the like color? Like, what is the wavelength of red? Oh, I see. Yeah. So Roy G. Biv. Yeah. Roy is 700. 750. This would be. And Violet's 390. Okay. Yep. So do you just like estimate? Oh, like in between? Yeah. Uh, yep, yep. Cool. Yeah, I doubt they'll, you know. They did. Uh, On the MCAT. Wait, uh, but for. The first time that I took one, I took a, like, I. For like, so like red. Scratched the score, but I went in and took it like before. Yeah. I took the MCAT to like learn about like how. So, and everything. But I mean, uh, so so the seven fifty is red and the three ninety is violet. You you know should know, but are you telling me like they just asked like what's the wavelength of blue here or something? Yeah, I I think it was. <laughs> yeah. Because I know I have it in my texts. It's it's okay. It's okay. So, yeah. So let's just. Try to finish this up. You don't okay. need to bring it up. I'll find it later. Okay. Yeah. What? Um, I actually have to run. Okay. Okay. So. Sorry. Yeah. So are we? We're meeting tomorrow, right? Yeah, I see. Uh, at three p.m. Eastern. So, um, what will you have done by that point? So. In the texts that we were going over, you told me to go over the essentials equations thing, which is what I was working on today. I was trying to memorize them. Uh -huh. It's not going as well as I, I I really need to like put, plug them into like a quizlet or something, like just have the equations going and then just learn every single one. Well, uh, sorry, you're saying the Anki part isn't working or? No, no. I just like was looking at the essentials equations sheet. Oh, the sheet. Okay. I meant yeah. the, the deck. I, I did the Anki. I do Anki decks every single day, but I just, I need to, um, but, like uh, where you like freeze but, everything but equations for now because I'm getting too many like biochem and other questions into the mix that it's you not. You could just click the essential equations deck. Yeah. Okay. You know what All I mean? Right. Okay. Sounds good. So, so yeah. So just, so if you click that, it'll show you just the essential equations deck, not the other stuff. Okay. And that would be the best way to get that stuff memorized. Sounds good. But um, so yeah, so you're gonna be doing that. You're gonna be, you know, um reviewing this content diagnostic. Like, you know, you could review it by like reading the I story. just have it as mile downs MCAT decks. I don't have like a under section. So I know you have to go, but just share your screen real quick. Sure. Like I haven't done any today, so, so I press have the plus sign. And there. Oh, cool. Okay. So yeah, just do the custom study or whatever to make it so that it shows you more and stuff. But yeah, let's aim to definitely have all of this down. Um and I don't think I have any cards in this deck because I've never done it. I think it might be frozen. I need to go see uh yeah 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 so so yeah make sure you get all those equations down make sure you get all of those functional groups down okay. right here it is oh yeah there it is so yeah get all these down and um functional groups down and uh and yeah we'll we we'll, oh and then continue reviewing the content diagnostic um and you know you could read the solution and if it makes sense you're good okay. uh if it doesn't we'll go over it when we meet so there you go so all right awesome so i will see you tomorrow yeah. and you're doing great keep up the good work okay all right take Bye. care